and uh, turkeys dancing here. You know they're they're, they're getting ready for the Thanksgiving holiday. <laughs> Can I say what they we we call them colloquially behind the scenes? Yeah, go for it. The twerking turkeys. Mm. <laughs> it's got a ring to it. We were just discussing. I want to meet the person who made this. Like, well, I I put together, but who made the uh, the, the the turkey the 3D itself? Three D imaging, the yes. animation. Like we, you know, have a we have a library of things that we can take and put within our graphics in our system. And uh, this was in there. Someone, <laughs> a human being, had to say. Let me get the eyes mm. just right so they can stare right into you as you, you look at the turkey fanning the flames. Do of you what's know imminent. what we need for our weather graphics computer? Tell me. Got this? This? That's what they said. They oh, were like, oh. well, like you had more upper something. level data. Nah. This. This, this right here. Well, this. we got Thanksgiving. That you, you asked the question. I thought rhetorically, you know, what do we need in the system next? And you oh, brought it up off camera. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe there's other holidays coming up here that could be dancing too. I'm saying the old Santa Claus, seen, yeah, Saint Nick, Nick. He 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 gets his dance. Oh, uh, let me get. So this, what are we doing here, Lou? Besides back on the rails, I apologize <laughs> to the viewers. It, it, you know, meteorologist Lou Turner, meteorologist Robert Spetta. I love spending time with Spetta because I always learn something, and and that's the beauty of our weather team. We're always trying to learn from each other, and we are one week out from Thanksgiving. So I, you know, I think it's fitting. We're we're within that range where I think we're confident enough to where we can kind of make a good forecast for you, whether you're staying home or you are going uh, to family, friend's house, or traveling uh, for Thanksgiving and uh, enjoying a little bit of twerking turkey with the fam. So uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the countdown is on, Robert. We got seven Woo. days. We mentioned seven days of Thanksgiving. We mentioned other holidays. We get Christmas 34 days out. And if you're celebrating New Year's Eve, we are 40 days away. Where did the month of November ago, right? I feel oh. like it was October yesterday, and it's already feeling a little bit more Christmas-like out here too. It you is. got that chill in the air, so. And, um, and we had that one. So yeah, so we've had this front. We're in that that season, aren't we? So we're kind of progressing out of hurricane season into the mid-latitude cyclone uh, season. The uh, the progressive pattern of front after front after front that's going to bring us fall. I, I mean, eventually we're getting these blasts and then we get warm again. But I'm showing this picture. Uh, the, the cloud shield's now dipped south of Disney World and, and down towards uh, maybe Melbourne and, and south of the Space Coast where the front is. So we're truly in it. But uh, kind of looking way out west, we got some stories to tell here um, with the things that we can expect that that because everything's connected. We have teleconnections, Robert. So this uh, will certainly be something that we need to watch here over the next uh, several days. What are we looking at? Oh, that is a bomb cyclone or a bombogenesis. What do you prefer to call it? Bombogenesis or bomb cyclone? I, I'm all about uh, syllable efficiency. So I'm going to go bomb cyclone. Now, that that's, it's a scary term. Cyclone scary mm. sometimes is, is alarming to people. What do you mean when you say cyclone? I think people's minds immediately go tornado or, or just some scary you know whether cyclone simply refers to motion of air a specific mm. motion uh, of air that would be counterclockwise around a low so that's what that's cyclone let's let's kind of take away the fear element of that and then the bomb element of it uh referring to the the how quickly the pressure is dropping with this what 24 millibars in 24 hours is a technical definition it's and amazing. it's 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 a meteorological term by the american meteorological society if you look it up inside the encyclopedia for the ams dictionary i should say the bomb cyclone is in there it's the same as uh polar vortex these are terms that have always been there yeah. but they start to get kind of the hype behind them and all that but it atmospheric is atmospheric river another one it's oh, not yeah. quite as hypey but it, it does kind of paint the picture of what's happening in san francisco or north northern california right I, now uh up the coast the cascades and the uh, uh pacific northwest i think that's the key thing they they paint the picture and that's the point because it is it, it's bringing hurricane strength winds out there uh blizzard warnings as well for the pacific northwest which correct me if i'm wrong lou i think it's 35 miles per hour sustained yep. for three hours in a less than a half mile visibility yes. with snowfall so it's not just heavy snow it's a lot yeah 
That's a bad day. It's a bad day. And so <laughs> cold core system, a lot different dynamic than a hurricane. But when we mentioned we're transitioning out, this is the type of system, these clippers that will be moving across the country. Mm. In fact, we've already had one. Uh, this system, uh, you know, kind of wreaking havoc on some of the Great Lakes uh, region. Uh, there, uh, just a classic example of the mid-latitude cyclone, the low pressure that you'd study in meteorological school you know the the oh. comma shape the and, and we got impacted by this because on the south end of this was the cold front that came through uh late in the day and, and, and brought us a cold air and this thing is lingering it's actually a little retrograding meaning it's going backwards a little bit mm. so you know we're talking about looking ahead to thanksgiving a lot of people are going to be traveling yes southeast okay but if you're heading like o'hare i can see right on on this map o'hare is probably going to have plays uh, delays uh cincinnati I mean, you know towards toronto new york so if you're traveling maybe a week ahead of the thanksgiving um, I know it's not the big travel day just yet, but this right. thing is creating some messy weather heading into the weekend. Well, you look ahead uh, in, in what's happening out west now is that, uh, you know, moves across the country. What will that uh, impact? And, and kind of our upper air pattern um, showing that that progressive system, the the uh, lows out west kind of moving back across the country. If you're travel, I mean, the, now we're, we're zooming out to Wednesday. So if the travel included anywhere in the Rockies, uh, mm. if you were going out west, west coast, I think the coasts are the ones you, you just want to be very, very cognizant of your airlines, always, of course, but especially at this time of year. But thinking if you were going out uh, uh, California, the Rocky Mountains, or e even the, the east coast, if you have family, uh, you know, from Chicago, uh, Detroit, uh, over to Erie, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Rochester. I just, you know, uh, be aware. Now and even to Thursday, looking like we have that snowstorm coming through to uh, Kansas and uh, uh, Panhandle of Oklahoma and towards Missouri, ultimately, to, to end that week. And do you think that's eventually going to kind of impact the first coast, too? I think with rain, it was certainly. Mm. I, I think as we get to Thursday, Friday uh, of this, we get a, a more organized front, right, Robert? And, I, and, and granted, this is just like when we talk about with hurricane forecasting, when you get to that 7 to 10 day out, uh, there's a lot of things that can impact computer modeling. Um, this, But this is makes sense climatologically this is mm. exactly the time of year where we get these strong fronts so that would tell me this this makes sense um with that again another area of low pressure right over the great lakes it's that time for lake effect we're getting into that that sort of uh, time so friday if you were thinking to try uh, be the the travel home at the day after thanksgiving i mean look at the eastern seaboard there yeah it's and you're right it's that time of year so you're thinking maybe after thanksgiving yeah. maybe for people traveling post thanksgiving it could be a bit messy out here um i like this graphic too because it just shows us the upper level winds the jet stream as it dips down and um you know we're going to be looking it's just what we call kind of um the fancy meteorological word for you meridional uh flow meaning you got a lot of these dips these ups and downs in the jet stream and the more we see that the more we're going to be seeing kind of these long range um changes here uh which going to this and lou you want to talk about this because you know we're talking about a cold front and everything, but what's happening here with the six to ten day outlook with that warmer above? So when you see the flattening of that that jet as you get a little bit further out would suggest that that warmer air from the south trying to eke its way a little bit more north, and also you know just general flow of things. You talk about an approaching cold front, so it's all about timing. Um, ahead of cold fronts, you get the the south southwesterly, sometimes southeasterly breeze, but generally south, and especially around these parts as the fronts get a little bit closer, you get a tightening pressure gradient. Um, those winds really pick up. You get uh, some warm, even tropical air that gets sucked in ahead of the front. Now, when the front passes, it's that collision of the cool with that warm that moves up that creates the chance for some thunder, uh, gives us that, that rain chance. But ahead of this, these fronts that are coming through, it seems like we'll average um, warmer than normal mm. with the bursts of cooler. And, but this is not until next week, right? Right. Because I know if in the near term this Correct. weekend, looking, looking Very cold. chilly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Near this, so we're looking out even to, into uh, to Thanksgiving uh, week there. So expect, we, we, you know, general forecasting locally, expect warmer uh, than normal conditions. So, Robert? <laughs> I love these graphics. Long and the short, what are we thinking with the weather turkeys? For, for Thanksgiving Day on the First Coast, specifically around the Jacksonville area, we're going to go sunny. 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 
I'm with you. There, that that one. This guy right there, get the sunglasses out, ready to go. Now, that me, I still think we're going to get some chilly mornings in there. Yeah. But you're right, during the daytime, warming up mid-70s, so about... Seasonable. Yes, Where we seasonable. should be, uh, in my opinion. Now, now uh, the cold guy, is he cold or is he scared? I, right? Because I am a little nervous for him. He, <laughs> and the cloudy guy just gets He's just... He's not having a good day. Uh, I want to know what's going on here. There's there's so much to unpack with this graphic. Yeah. Between the dancing turkey, the guy just you know where's he going? Wh wh what's he, he looking at? <laughs> and, and plus the, the 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 advertisement that says mm, turkey in mm, front of them. Delicious. A little little dark there. A little dark meat. Uh, no wonder they're getting on the bus and getting out of this town. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's our forecast for Thanksgiving right for now, sure. mid seven. Still sticking with those mid-70s, and, mm. and we're going to still stick with a good bit of sunshine, though. We are watching the timing of a front, so let's be uh, cognizant of that and those changes that can uh, be made to, that can adjust things by 12 to, to 18 hours. So we'll watch uh, that very, very carefully. Travel around our country. Remember when we showed you the big map, as we look to next Wednesday, I know that's like the busy, busy travel day, obviously. If you can't avoid the Wednesday, do it. But looking out towards Denver, Salt Lake City, if you've got connections there, you're going to see family in those towns. We're talking about about uh, the potential for some snowy conditions. Those, they've got the infrastructure to deal with it, but that could delay things as well. I'm also looking, you know, days ahead of that, if you're trying to get out early, along the, our coast. So again, we watched that uh, that massive system that's out in the Pacific Northwest right now. You're thinking about uh, uh, travel. If you have travel to LA, up to San Francisco, Seattle, let's, uh, let's be aware. Uh, and uh, it's a long trip to, to get to go to see family. It's probably not very often you get to go do that if you're making that long trip. And then up towards uh, New York, York City, uh, if you got the East Coast, the Northeast plans, looking okay for Wednesday. I still want to watch out very carefully for the potential for some lake effect um, happening towards Rochester and Buffalo. All right, Whoa. all right, so a little fun. A little fun with our twerking turkeys. One has to go, and I'm not talking about the turkeys, Robert. So uh, for, before I bring up the, the things that we're going to have to pick, you have to pick one to leave. Get Ooh. off the table. All right. What is uh, the favorite go-to Thanksgiving food mm. item for you. I like a solid stuffing. Um, stuffing, okay. Mm. And it's, it's stuffing, it's not good. dressing. You know, down it, it, some folks, I grew up in South Carolina. I know you're from Western New York. Uh, it's stuffing or dressing. Have you heard that battle before? Yeah, I know I know the battle. I, the battle. I've always grew up with stuffing. Of course. Granted, dressing, you know, it's... I'm going to just call it dressing, but, but you know what? It's cultural, and you and I are just going to have that battle through eternity. Uh, so, one has to go. I, uh, I put up... That's mashed potatoes and gravy. I do like a good... I think the gravy is more gravy. important than the mashed gravy potatoes. Gravy is an actual... In, in On Thanksgiving, gravy is a food item. Mm. It is a part of it. It's not... It doesn't exist... It, it, it can exist on its own, but you're right. That one's got to go with... The, mashed potatoes and gravy is including the gravy, so that might make it tricky. Mm. Uh, pumpkin pie is what I put here. Mm. I'm going to do any kind of dessert. I'm going to conclude that, but pumpkin pie is what I used. My go-to dessert on Thanksgiving is key lime pie. That's what my family does. From down this way, we do that. Uh, all right, there's your green bean casserole. Ooh. And then the stuffing and or dressing. Go ah. dressing. So, Robert, one's got to go. What are you kicking off of your For me, buffet? I, I, th th it's the green bean casserole. Green bean casserole's got to go. It's got to go. Now... It could, if you're turning, if you're twisting my arm, I'm twisting your arm here. Then it's the green bee casserole. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm all about the mashed potatoes. It's got to be good gravy on there. <laughs> uh, the pumpkin pie. You got to have a dessert. Come on now. Yeah. So if, if you, what about you? What about you? Because uh, apparently it's not the green bean casserole. It's not the green bean casserole. It's not the dressing. You know what it is? I don't have much of a sweet tooth. Now, if I am going to have dessert, it's going to be key lime pie. And that's the kind of the go-to. But usually mm. I never save room for it anyway. I've got to have all those starches. This I've got to have it. So take a hike, pumpkin pie. This is true. By table. the time I usually get to the pie, <clears throat> uh, I'm, I, I just the pie gets ate later or the next day. Sure. sure. That's just... a good point. It's the leftovers. And all of those things are great leftovers. So I wanna, let's leave them with the uh, seven days, shall we? Because uh, we are we don't quite have Thanksgiving on the seven day yet, Robert, but we're looking out to Wednesday the day before. We're putting that 30% chance of a shower in because we do see the front. I think uh, we have been talking extensively about all the cold air we've already got in place right now. That's not lingering, okay? So we've got Friday morning cold, Saturday morning cold, even patchy frost possible west of town.
around, Sunday morning cold, and then we begin to rebound a bit. Certainly cool mornings, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but our afternoons begin to rebound as the winds shift more out of south, southwest. That'll help us get those uh, warmer afternoon temperatures in the 70s, which looks like it'll linger locally in uh, into Thanksgiving. I got I got an important question for you Shoot. here on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Are you a, a parade guy or a football guy? Football guy. Yeah. I, I, I like can, the parade. I like to put the parade on and just have it play. These, there you go. Mm. And it's it's kind of like every once in a while you look up. I like to listen out for the for the local guys who are in the parade. Like every once in a while you're going to get First Coast uh, band, marching bands, or cheering oh, yes. groups, or, or groups that are in. I like to kind of uh, you know pick up a little bit. It is. It's nice because you don't want to have something on Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever holiday. You don't have, to me. You don't have something on TV that's going to be super captivating like i've got to sit and watch because now you're not focused on the meal cooking your family (laughs) you just need some kind of like you know random Mm. stuff on so i I think the parade on is good for that now when it's time to lock in i like to have i like to have my my football on nice Uh, by the way uh first off make sure you stream first coast news plus on thanksgiving day if you're watching um over the airways uh who will be cutting in during the Macy's Day Parade. And what I mean by cutting in is every so often you're going to have uh, your local weather forecaster pop up. It's going to be that guy over there, right? Yeah, we're with you on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. 100%. I'll be right here with you. Uh, morning forecast and then cutting in on the on the parade. So I hope you have the parade on. Great. Good point, Robert. Let's, mm. let's, let's be parade people. And uh, every once in a while, well, I'll jump in. I'll be here during the evening show. So okay. uh, unfortunately, I will not be cooking. But first, the, the, the station provides a nice oh, little yeah. meal here for us. So um, yeah, and which I... I think maybe it's a good excuse for me not to have to labor over the turkey. I'm do all the dishes. <laughs> yes, and all that. Uh, so yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun day, be yeah. an interesting day, and the weather's looking good for it. So that's good. I agree. I think so. Safe travels to everybody who's getting on the road. You know, uh, just just get there, get back, be safe and sound. Um, again, the kind of the summary: the coast. We'll watch very carefully the coasts for any uh, major travel disruptions as we get towards the end. So anyway, for uh, Robert Spetta, uh, meteorologist Robert Spetta, I'm meteorologist mm-hmm. Lewis Turner. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. We'll update you with uh, Thanksgiving activities as they come in. See you all around. Bye.